Hey, aloha, everybody. This is Jeff Rambo. We are here with the Jeff Rambo Show, a special edition, and we're going to focus on something that we don't talk quite enough about, and that's college football. Because, ladies and gentlemen, college football is coming to the Emerald Isle, and not just any college football. We're talking about one of the preeminent programs in U.S. college football, one of the most historic programs in U.S. US college football to face an ancient rival, right? We're talking about the University of Notre Dame against the Naval Academy midshipmen. Now, this rivalry goes back to the 40s when Navy was a national power and Notre Dame was a national power and they would meet every, the Army-Navy game, the Army-Notre Dame game, and the Navy-Notre Dame game were some of the biggest games in the 40s and 50s. Notre Dame continued to be to be one of the preeminent programs throughout the 60s, the 70s, the Arab Parsegian era where they're winning national championships. They got Terry Hanready. They got Joe Theismann. They got Tom Clements. They got all, I mean, you talk about Heisman Trophy winners, Tim Brown, one of the biggest college names in college sports, any sport is Notre Dame football. And then Navy struggles. During the Vietnam era, nobody wants to go to the Navy. Navy has Roger Staubach wins the Heisman Trophy at Navy. Joe Bellino wins the Heisman Trophy at Navy in the 50s, early 60s, and then they drop off the cliff. And then Paul Johnson brings the option to Annapolis and the dynamic change. And one stretch of time, one five-year period under my good friend, right? My good friend at the Naval Academy, right, is the head coach, and they beat Notre Dame three out of five years straight, right? And when you think about that, Navy, which has all the restrictions of these kids don't go to Navy to get to the National Football League. As a matter of fact, they go to Navy to be to serve their country, to be officers and midshipmen and you know pilots and all the other things you you learn to do at the mil at a military academy. But they want to play Division One college football, and for them, with a bunch and I'm I'm going to tell you the story. Kenny Niamatololo is the guy I'm talking about. Kenny was the head coach at Navy. In 2017, he says to me, he calls me, he says, Jeff, I know you're from South Bend. We're playing Army. I want you to come and be on the sidelines and be in the locker room with our team. Right? And Michael, my wife and I go and meet the team in Michigan City the night before the game. And we walk into the room, and these are the most impressive kids you've ever seen. I mean, impressive. But they, they all look like me. I mean, they are small, and I'm thinking to myself, this is, they are going to get murdered, right? We go, we go, we get on the bus the next morning, we drive through the, from Michigan City to South Bend, Indiana, is about a 35-minute drive. We drive into the stadium, it's, it's a November cold day. These kids file off the bus, there it is, Notre Dame Stadium, the most iconic stadium in the United States, in my opinion, Right? And touchdown Jesus in one end zone. We we file in. The kids are getting taped. And again, I'm looking at them and I'm saying, somebody better call their mothers and just say, thank you for sending your son to service because he, God, we lost him today. I mean, it's, it's like, I'm just thinking they're going to get slaughtered, right? And Notre Dame comes in. And this is, this is a Notre Dame team that has numerous first round draft choices, numerous you know, how, I mean, the, the, their offensive line was picked the best offensive line in America, all this stuff. Michael, they came out of the tunnel, right? And I, and I looked at, I looked at Kenny and he, and I said, are you kidding me? And he goes, just watch, just watch. And those guys play so hard in such, you know, they, they had a gimmick offense. They had the option offense. And they take Notre Dame to the fourth quarter and they run a halfback option pass with about 
three minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. And the guy throws it about a foot short or they beat Notre Dame for the fourth time in six years, right? This is a rivalry that is like no other. And you talk to Notre Dame players and they say the teams they hate to play the most are the service academy because it doesn't matter. They never give up. They're going to they're going to play as hard as they can for 60 minutes. They're going to hit you all, every day. They're going to they they run that crazy option offense. I just think it's going to be a tremendous game, a tremendous game in Ireland. And for Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish, Mike, yeah. the Fighting Irish. I grew up. I didn't grow up. I I would say this. I went to junior high and high school in South Bend, right. Our house was so close to the stadium on Saturday Saturday morning that when Notre Dame would score a touchdown, you could walk out of the house and hear the band play and hear the crowd, right? And I sold programs at the games as a kid, as a 12-year-old kid. My, in my junior high years, 12 and 13, I sold programs at the game. They'd give you 50 programs in the morning. As soon as you sold them, you came back and you gave them the money, right? And I would sneak into the game. I'd sell my programs first. I'd get, and then I'd hide from the ushers in the in the bowels of Old Notre Dame Stadium, and then I'd come out into the stadium, in with the team, because in the locker room at Notre Dame, you go down this tunnel, and it's a very very narrow loop. Mm -hmm. All right, and you've seen it on 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 uh, some of the TV shows about Notre Dame and and uh, the Rudy story and all that stuff. But let me just tell you. As, as the team comes in, there's no room in the tunnel, right? The team's like shoulder to shoulder, right? And so I would get in with the players and the players didn't know who I was. I was just some kid, right? And I would come out. So I've entered into that stadium to thunderous applause. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something. It's still, it's still. And I'm not a Notre Dame fan and never was. I'd go in, I'd get into the stadium, sneak into the stadium, and just keep moving so I didn't get didn't get popped for because you know, there's no seats, right? You don't have a seat. But I'd root I'd root against them, right? But I'd go to the game every every Saturday because the the tradition and to see those gold helmets coming out of the tunnel is like I'm telling you, it's worth whatever they're paying for tickets. It's it, it, they're not charging enough to see this team. I'm just telling. Well, I have to say, Jeff, that's that seven and a half minute monologue certainly has me fired up. I'm I'm, I'm being serious. That was so good in so many levels. Um, yeah, look, I mean, this is a special episode. The Erlingus College Football Classic is a Saturday, seven thirty local time in the evening, two thirty Eastern. Games at NBC in the states. And obviously it's in Dublin. It is on Sky Sports as well because of Peacock, the agreement, which is great as well. No Neil and Jeff and Jebel or Phoebe on the sidelines. I, I, like, I'm just going to publicly say that. That should have happened. I think I'm I'm going to slag all you lads in person. I, I know that probably couldn't have happened, but it would have been great to see all the Sky Sports ones go over and do it maybe next year. It's it's a big moment for football fans here. Like that that, that that's, that's as big a game as we'll get unless the NFL comes and. I think that's bigger than, you know, we've got Georgia Tech, FSU coming next year. I, I'm sorry, but in 25, if you have Ohio State, if you have Georgia, big universe, big, like, look, they're all big college, but like big, like people will fly over and the games are great. I just, I think this is, this is the game. Like, like having Notre Dame over is a big idea. And look, this is a pregame. There's a good chance a lot of people are going to watch this, especially people with the game. I think it's a great moment for for football here, and um, but I I I I I I already hope. But I asked Marcus Freeman this a few weeks ago. You know, will you come back? And he's like, Yeah, we'll come back. You know, like they like uh, Coach Newbury when I spoke to him, he wants to come back, and they haven't even flown out yet. You know, so I think that says an awful lot. I have never seen anything like it in my life in terms of hotel rooms. It's the biggest movement of people since the Second World War, Jeff, from North America. It is insane. So it's it's going to be a great day, I guess. Just if, if we talk about it a, like a little bit, what is your impression of Marcus Freeman? Because I, I was I was very impressed when I spoke to him. Just the the calmness, the, the collectiveness, and then we when we spoke to like JD Bertrand and Audrey Gastamay in, in Dublin when we met them a few months ago, they love him. 
Like I think I think that says a lot about a guy who's still quite young, you know. Marcus Freeman is one of the guys, young guys in coaching. You know, we, you hear that you hear people talk about this, and and I think you because you've had a chance to speak with him directly. Marcus Freeman has it, you know, the it factor. When you sit down with him, you realize you're in the presence of somebody that really, really, really gets it, is sharp, that understands, that communicates, that that can relate to players, to all of those things. Now, the thing that's that Marcus Freeman is in is the most intense pressure cooker or one of maybe the five most intense pressure cooker jobs in the entire college football landscape, right? Because of the expectation that's been built at Notre Dame over the last 60 years, right? The national championships, the Heisman Trophy winners, the NFL draft choices, the success, the the winning percentages, the bowl games, all of it. So the focus, you know, Notre Dame is such a unique animal, Michael. Notre Dame is a small Catholic institution in the Midwest, right? And and this this is a tremendous story. Newt Rockney, who was the probably the first legendary coach at Notre Dame, actually envisioned this whole thing well before it happened. Notre Dame was a small five thousand student all male Catholic school, right? And they became a national power under Rockney and built a 60,000 seat stadium when they have 5,000 students in their university and another 80,000 in the community. You can't fill that stadium, right? But they did. And you look at how it was built. He built it with nothing around it. And they they asked him, he said, Newt, what are you guys doing? And he said, because one day there'll be people parking here. And you go to Notre Dame Stadium now, and it's a sea of tailgaters around it. Yeah. Their tailgate, it's, I mean, I can't, I can't even describe it to you. On Wednesday before a Notre Dame game, that lot starts to fill up with people who drive from all over the country. Some of them aren't even Notre Dame alumni. Notre Dame has what they refer to as their subway alumni. And those are people who have an affinity or a tie to the school, an emotional tie to the school that never went to the school, right? They are they are the most iconic brand in college football without a shadow of a doubt. Now, Marcus Freeman has to live up to those expectations, right? And that's a tall task. That's a big ask. Notre Dame is one of the only independent teams left in the United States. We see all this conference realignment going, Notre Dame belongs to the ACC and every other sport but one, and that's football, because Notre Dame football is separate because it's unique, right? They've got their own television contract with NBC, their own television contract. They don't share it with anybody else. It's their money, right? It is an unbelievable, unbelievable opportunity for the fans in Ireland to see maybe something that you may never see again in your lifetime, right? And when that band comes out of that tunnel, right? And they they have the they have a uh, kilted group that comes out first. The leprechaun as well. And the leprechaun. And and da 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 this is what it's gonna hear. Da 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 and they they do the special um it's it's a special like cadence as they come out, and I'm going to tell you something. You, if it doesn't get hair up on the back of your neck, then you don't have a pulse because it is unbelievable. Yeah, I think the game last year was a good success. It was a, it was a, it was a great year, but this year it's going to be rammed, and I think it will make the hairs in your back go. I, I just feel fortunate to be there, and obviously thanks to the organizers for credentialing us. You know. Like we just signed, very fortunate. We just signed a young player here, Chris Karlovecki, and Chris was a part of that game last year in Dublin. He played for Nebraska, right? 
he's a young linebacker out of Traverse City, Michigan. And he, and he signed with us after he got cut with the Bronco, by the Broncos. And I asked him the other day, I said, how was your experience in Ireland? And he couldn't say enough good things. He said it was tremendous, the, 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 all the things that they got to see and do, the, the hospitality of the Irish people. The, you know, he, he was shocked, frankly, at the knowledge of the Irish fan and how much they knew about football and understand, understood football. It's, it's, it's a hot ticket. There are thousands of thousands of NFL fans in Ireland. Thousands of fans, obviously, in the UK and Europe that are trying to get over it, can't get it. That, that's how big this is. So that's this is why we're talking about it. Navy won the last game in 2016. They haven't won one since. Uh, so it's going to be really interesting. I guess just just finally, Jeff, um, do you think they'll be close? Because, I'm asking this because the, they played each other in November last year and it was 35-32 in Notre Dame. Granted, bar 2017, every other game has been quite, quite one-sided. So like, personally for me, I'd like to see a close game. I think Dublin deserves it. But I feel, and I look, I strongly feel, and this would be relevant to any fan in the UK listening to this or beyond, I look at this Saturday, albeit it's in a different stadium, I, I look at this Saturday as a test project for an NFL game in Ireland. There's no doubt about it. I, I don't think there's any question because no, and here's why, no other program is going to bring as much validity to the game as Notre Dame does. And so when when people back in the States turn, in, turn on their televisions and they see 60,000 or whatever Aviva holds or Croke Park holds, right? 48,000 in, in any Aviva. So it's very small. It's 48,000 Croke Park would hold 82 for American football. So it's this one. It's very... Hold on. I took you and Richard, I do remember. It, it is, it's small, isn't it? It's quite. It's but I'm gonna tell you, it's a beautiful venue, and I'm gonna when it's when it's gonna be full and it's gonna be loud, and people back in in America will see that. I think it is a litmus test for an NFL game in Ireland. It's an opportunity for the Irish fans to show off for everybody because no team, no team in and I'm talking Alabama, USC, Michigan, no team in college football, gets the focus that Notre Dame does, that has the reach that Notre Dame does, right? So there will be plenty of eyes on this game. The Navy the Navy kids are, are heroic. I mean, what they're doing and what, you know, what they put themselves through to be able to play college football. And Kenny told me this one. He said, Jeff, we get on a plane to fly to a, a road game. And he said, before the wheels of the plane are off the ground, every kid's asleep on the plane. And I said, what? And he said, they don't sleep. Their schedule is so packedly tight, packed tight with school and football and all the things that they have to do that they don't sleep. When the freshmen come in, right, they're allowed one hour of physical training. You can go to your sport for one hour a day. You know what Kenny would do with them as freshmen? He put them in the weight room, shut the lights off, and let them sleep for an hour. That's how much they, they tax these kids. And yet they're able to go out and play at a high level. And they won't, they do not deserve, I mean, excuse me, they do not belong on the field with Notre Dame athletically if you just went player for player. But they're able to play with Notre Dame and teams like Notre Dame because they've got such great character. They play so hard. And It'll be interesting to me to see what Navy's going to do offensively. Are they going to stay with the wishbone? Are they going to stay with the, the option offense? Or are they going to try and come into the 21st century with, you know, a, a more balanced attack? I, I guess the last thing I will say, Jeff, on, on this game, on the Erlingas College Football Classic this Saturday, 7.30 our time. I know Jeff's playing at midnight Irish time, UK time. And I'm sure he'll find a way in BC Place to watch the game privately before he does it. And um, I'm, I'm joking. You're, you're you're playing just after this game, aren't you? So you're you're going to find it hard to watch this game. It's going to be tough because we'll be on a charter heading home. But I certainly, you know, I'll I'll have my Wi-Fi hooked up and I'll be following it as close as I. I'll can. send you some pictures. Don't worry. Uh, the look the, the big question is this: Sam Hartman first game of the first game of another day, and it's in Dublin. I think like that that is like 
obviously the biggest storyline is Notre Dame coming over. The ties it has to Ireland, the Catholic, uh, the Catholic look. There, there's no getting past it. the Catholic heritage. There, there's a huge mass in Dublin Castle this Saturday at eleven o'clock in the morning. Then they're going to do the walk to start going to the city. It, like it's incredible. But Sam Hartman first game went from Wake Forest to Notre Dame. Have you seen much of Sam Hartman? I, I would say Sam, Sam Hartman is a talented player. Sam Hartman is a guy that, you know, you, you look at what you're able to. Okay, understand. Wake Forest is the second smallest Division One university in the United States. They play in the ACC against mega powers. You know, people like Pitt, people like Syracuse, people like Boston College, Clemson, North Carolina, North Carolina State. They go in there and battle those people, right, with the smallest enrollment in the in in college football. Sam Hartman put at the controls of the Notre Dame offense, I think it's going to be exciting to watch because he's got talent all around him, right? The focus will be different than he's ever felt because being the quarterback at Wake Forest is a lot different mm. than the quarterback at Notre Dame. And you look back and you see over your shoulder, oh, shit, that's Joe Montana. Oh, there's Rick Meyer. Oh, there's Joe Theismann. Oh, there's Terry Hanratty. I mean, you think about the quarterbacks that have come through Notre Dame, right? I mean, the national championships, all of that history, all of that expectation, all of that focus, all of that attention is now directly on Sam Hartman. How he deals with it is going to tell us a lot about what kind of professional prospect he is. Because if you can sur- if you can survive the 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 focus, if you can survive the glare of the hot lights at Notre Dame as a quarterback, then you can survive anywhere. Uh, just, just finally, global football, the gift program sees the NFL Academy taking on the the UK NFL Academy taking on uh, a high school on Friday night, and there's two other high school games with special guests on Friday night. So I think for football fans here, it's awesome. If you're in the UK, fly over. You can get right there, fly over. I've got a floor in my hotel beside the stadium. You're more than welcome to DM me and bid at least 200 euro for the floor. You can have it. There's every hotel room's gone. But Jeff, I, I wish you were coming over, man. Ho- hopefully next year we got, um, well, hopefully not because, you know, you got the CFL thing going on. But sometime we will go to a college game in Dublin and we'll have the crack. Um, do you want to sign us out? Yeah. And I, again, I'd like to say thank you to all of you who joined us again today and are you become a part of the tribe. If you have a chance, say a little prayer, a little pulley for the island of Maui as they fight themselves back from a devastating fire. Um, Michael, it's always a pleasure, and it was really fun today to talk college football and talk Notre Dame and Navy in what what will be, I'm sure, a tremendous, tremendous day out for anybody who loves football in Ireland. Aloha. Aloha.